Right then folks, want to see me take a diff at a car and take it apart? Got nothing else to do here in coronavirus world, so might as well get on and do it. Why am I doing it? I got a little bit of a whine coming from the gearbox, coming from the rear left hand side, so it could be a wheel bearing, but bearings are cheap for the output shafts. I'm not going to take the whole thing apart, but I am going to take it apart, but I'm not going to be doing the pinion bearing. Let's get in there and have a little look. Let me show you what has to come out before we get under there. There's probably been a million diff videos, but why not get under the car and I'll show you what we've got to play with. Welcome to underneath the 36. My diff is a bit weepy, as you might be able to tell by looking at the the rear cover there along the bottom edge of that has a bit of oil coming out as I said it's got a bit of a whine now I believe it might be this output shaft bearing which is causing the whine so I'm going to be changing it and whilst I'm under here if any of you followed the channel for a long time you'll know I've got these cheapy max speeding rods camber arms these things I'm going to get under and whilst I've got the diff out I'm going to be swapping those bushings over hopefully for some polyurethane ones that I've got I'm going to be taking the exhaust off here to be able to get that arm out easily without having to undo all the wheel and everything like that normally to get a diff out you wouldn't have to undo the exhaust, you can snake out the anti-roll bar, get it out of the way of the bolts for the, the diff itself. The bolt has got the diff, if any of you don't know, has got 18mm bolt here and over here, and then another one at the nose, that's the one that breaks quite often, and the anti-roll bar kind of fills the back of that. You can see that just up in there. The easiest way is get anti-roll bar out of the way. I'm going to take off the back box, it's dead easy to take off anyway, it's only, you know, six bolts or whatever it is to take the thing off, and then we'll get in there and we'll start undoing things. Exhaust is off, anti roll bar swung down and out of the way, so it's just sitting on the drop links. That's out of the way enough to get the diff out. You can see here the one bolt there and one bolt up that end for the ears of the diff. It's actually pretty easy to remove the BMW diff. First thing you want to do before you go any further, pull out the speed sensor plug. Trust me, it's too easy to leave it attached and then you end up trying to bring a diff down and that's not a very big manly wire there, so you definitely want that unplugged. Um, you then have to crawl yourself along to the front of the car and this is where things get a little bit annoying obviously you've got four bolts in your prop if you have a diff like this this is a 188 diff you have to spin the crankshaft there so you spin the prop shaft to be able to access them all they're 16 millimeter nuts 18 millimeter bolt on the nose of the diff over this side here that's the one that breaks on loads of people i'll show you what that looks like when it comes out and then once you've got the the prop off you've got to remove the axle carriers and the stub axles. They are Torx bits, you can't even see the heads on them because they're so covering gunk right now. Get a wire brush and then make sure they're clean before you put your tool on them. And the easiest way to get around doing these is to go in the top first, spin the wheels, work the axle round, turn the wheel basically, and access each one of them. I think there's six of them in each axle side. They'll then come off as a cup, you'll see that a bit later on. And then the diff is basically free apart from the bolts that mount it to the car. I'm going to crack on and get the prop shaft undone first of all and then start and work on these axle bolts. Now let's be honest, the reason that taking a diff out can be a bit tricky with those bolts that are on the axle carriers and the bolts that are on the prop shaft is because they want to spin. I'm pretty lucky, I've had all my car apart a few times as you well know and all the stuff that's in there is fairly well greased up, wasn't too hard to remove. Long story short, to remove the prop you either want to get a bar and try to trying to like get it in between the prop universal joint and hold on it that will allow you to undo some of the bolts sometimes or you need to get somebody in the car who can stand on the foot brake use the handbrake put the car in gear and intermittently whilst you need to turn those items they let off and they allow you to rotate the wheels so you can turn the prop and get to all the bolts i've now got it all off so all i've got left to do is the three diff bolts let's just pop under and i'll just show you what i mean there you go guys we have a bare diff with the two axles just hanging down all that's left to do now is the bolt on the nose and the two bolts in the ears and then I can lug this thing out of the car now. You should use an axle stand or trolley jack or a diff carrier but they're not that heavy. What is it, 20 kilos maybe? I don't know. Someone can quote me on that in the comments but you know you can muscle it out by hand if you're fairly clever. What I like to do is undo the nose bolt first, get a bar in between the diff and the axle carrier and you know hold the diff up so that it doesn't want to lean on that bolt. Once the bolt is out you can let the dip, diff tip down a little bit at the front, the prop will allow that. Pull the two bolts out the back, one there and one there and then muscle the diff backwards this way towards the camera and down and then let it drop down onto a carpet or something like that. So let's get on with that now. Right so there it is, it's out and I've got it draining over a a little bucket, just getting all the oil out of it because it stinks and obviously I uh, want to put fresh oil in. What have I bought for that? I bought something interesting, don't I? I bought some of this stuff, Centerpod. It's quite reasonably priced on OP oils. That'll be going back in. Now, I will be honest guys, I want to, I always want to make everything look mint when I take it apart. In reality, it doesn't stay that way for very long and it seems a bit pointless. So I'm going to give it a damn good clean up, clean up the mating faces, obviously that's the most important bit and reseal them. I tried to use some sealant on this last time I put it together. It's just broken down 
and it's total rubbish so it was the wrong stuff for the job i will be using the right stuff for the job this time there's a little bit of metal filing there that you can see that's coming out of the gears look how beautiful that is that indicates to me that there's obviously some metal getting ground away in here pulling the stub axles out is dead easy just get a bar in pop the thing out uh, noting that the little metal tab sits at the top of the diff this is the top side that you're looking at here and then the big long bolt goes in here i don't know if you make that out you know you probably can't on camera i don't really want to turn it around right now because it's delicate the reason that breaks is because the diff in the car wants to sort of do this with the torque as you put your foot down that bolt takes all that strain of it moving backwards and forwards and under a lot of tension it will snap now that being said i've never seen a snapped one yet i'm not sure how much of an internet myth that is i'm pretty sure it's not i'm pretty sure it's genuine problem with these but my bolt is absolutely fine so we'll continue to use it as it stands a lot of cleaning up to do here to get most of the gunk off the outside it's had a coat of hammer out this diff once before i've got some enamel spray paint i'm going to be using just to tar up a little bit make it look a little bit nicer and mainly so it's easier to handle it's all slippy and horrible at the moment because it's covered in grease so right so once you take the back cover off you end up with what looks like this it's actually dead easy to take apart there's nothing really to it but i thought i'd film it just so you can see what's going on here first thing to do really is to pull out the stub axles and they come out nice and easy with a crowbar just get a crowbar in one of the bolts give it a little pop and it should come out loose like that and it just unslots that little groove that you can see just here is where the snap ring sits and holds it into the differential itself and then we've got six 30 millimeter bolts that run around the axle the bearing carrier i've actually cheated a little bit i have loosened these off already you can see how cruddy mine are it's in bad shape pull all these bolts out so i've always found these two at the top on both sides seem to be stiffer more difficult to undo i don't know why if anyone knows the answer to that stick it down in the comments you're going to get filthy rush to do this it stinks nothing you can do about it it's just the way it is man when you pull this out remember as i said before this little extra tab that you can see it's a good little pry tab that i'm going to use that to pull this carrier out that has to go at the top i believe all right so i'm certainly going to leave it in the top so i know that it's the same orientation that bmw intended see you can see this side this bolt and the one next to it are going to be tight the whole way out i've no idea why they don't appear to have any loctite on or anything like that just to confirm that there is something on there you see there's some white shit on there but they're just going into the carrier housing here i don't know if in the factory they decide to seal them a little bit because the oil is sitting on them this side wasn't like that i think because of that this is every diff i've taken apart it's always been the same so just these two bottom bolts i think i will put some sealant some thread lock on these when i put it back together again just to try and give it the same protection that bmw intended again there you go some kind of sealant on the bottom of there the thread holes do poke the whole way through into the inside of the carrier on both sides whereas the other four i've loosened these off and they just wind out by hand no problem at all definitely something on these two bolts this side wasn't like that now i had a leak coming from actually that's interesting i had a leak coming from this side i'm fairly sure you can see this one's a lot more cruddy on this side so we just turn it around again one more time these work as a great little pry but they're not quite perfect so you can see that one started to move there it did the well, last time i did this it required a little bit of muscle so give it a little tap there's an o-ring that holds this in now there we go that one's come out pretty easy so i would say as soon as you get it that far tip it back up because now your entire drive is loose and these just pull out don't forget you got a shim in there that's pretty important you keep that in there okay a brief word of note whilst we're taking this stuff apart you do not want to mix up the shims do not mix them up mark them up however you choose to and keep them with the cups they came from and orientated so you know which one came from which side more on that later and this is the whole part we're going to be messing around with just hold the diff up a little bit to take a bit of strain off and uh, there she comes so the main part i'm changing here is this outer race you can see some wear on and the inner race and the tapered roller bearing that's on the main part of the diff which now just lifts out i'm going to be going in i'm going to be taking out this bearing here swapping it over for a new one and the same on this side you can actually hear that one sounds a bit a bit rough shouldn't be that loose so that's a good sign that i'm kind of on the right track here can we spin this one same thing again First thing I'm going to do is clean up all this case so it's ready to accept the new bits once they go back together. This is the assembly we're going to mess with and what I want to try and avoid is any noise here. Once you've taken your diff apart and you've got all your constituent parts you know, in their separate places, take them all apart and you end up with what you have here basically. I've got the two sort of stub axles, I've got the two, I don't know what you call these bearing housings I suppose you could call them, um, the dust covers, I've got some new o-rings and I've got some new seals. So I want to put all this together today. Now first of all, if you are going to be messing around with these diff housings, you want to make sure, sorry bearing housings, you want to make sure you're not painting the inside where the seal is going to sit 
or obviously any of the part that's going to go in the car. So our O-ring is going to go around this groove in here, and both exactly the same. O-ring in there, seal out here. Being careful not to block this oil passageway. This oil passageway has to remain open, I believe. Uh, and then the dust covers are going to go back down onto these uh, little stub axles. Now, I did look up how much these things cost, because this one was a bit crusty. I don't know if you can make it on camera there. It's a little bit pitted and not very tasty looking. That's why I've painted these. Normally wouldn't have bothered doing that, which is why I've not bothered with these ones. These are still zinc plated. They're still in good condition. So I'm not messed around with them at all. These were really expensive on eBay. I found one seller in the UK who wanted £20 for one of these. I'm not being funny, but I'm not paying that for a dust cover. It's just pointless. So I'm hoping I've not put enough paint on these. They won't go back on, but let's give it a try. I think I'll start with that first. Big one obviously has to go down to begin with. And really, he should pretty much just push on but I think he's going to need a few taps that might work quite nicely it's just a friction fit guys that's in so let me give you a little idea of what that looks like there we go we'll do the same in the other one okay so that's pretty much done these are just a pair of um, pliers for putting on those clips you put on a, hol a holstery but anything with a soft edge will do same thing again with these ones this, I'm not going to be as precious with these because they're still metal, so... Okay, so that's that seated quite nicely. Right, now, one of the things that is imperative is that this surface here, this one here where the bearing is, uh, sorry, where the seal is going to ride, is absolutely as clean as it can be. I have bought just pattern seals. I'm not going to waste my money on, you know, really expensive seals. This diff's not worth it. It's just a standard 315 diff. I'm not going mad here. I'm trying to do this on a the budget. These are Cortico seals. And the size, if you want to know them, is on the back of the box. It's the same size as the BMW seal, exactly. The only difference is it doesn't have a dust cover skirt that's going to sit inside of here. Just to bear in mind, that seal is going to sit eventually like something like that. Although it has to be oiled, it has to be on a nice smooth surface. If your surface is not smooth, it's just gonna cause problems. You're gonna have bits of grit getting in here, which are gonna go into the diff, and you're gonna have a bad seal that sits on there. He's gonna sit something like that, but in the housing. So let's have a little look at doing that now. So that those two parts are basically finished. Seal housing, looks like so. This again has all been cleaned up and scotch brighted and then I've treated it all with a, a rust protector. Hopefully this seal is gonna drop something like that into there and then I need to drive them home, but I need to do that nice and straight. So I'm lucky enough to have some stupidly big sockets and that one there is beautiful for this. Use whatever you've got to hand guys. There's no orientation and you don't want to put any lube on this. You just want to drive it straight in nice and cleanly. We'll lay that on there. I'm actually going to get my head down here so I can see if it's level. Yes, it looks like it is. And a little tip for you, I've bought four of these seals. So if I make a mess of one, it doesn't matter. Right, that's already starting to go in. So it's almost flush on this downside here, on the, sorry, on the bottom side, but not on the top. So I'm just gonna drive it a bit more from that side. Right, I'm pretty happy with this bottom edge. I still wanna go a little bit on this top edge here, so. Right, and as you can see, if you look inside there, that little oil hole that you can probably just about make out on camera, if I can get it to focus on it here, um, is exposed. So it's not blocked, that's really crucial. And that seal is nice and flush in there now. There we go. So let's do that a second time in this one. Yeah, just off that little hole, you can see there a nice little image of how close it is. Okay, so that's the seals in there. Ultimately, what happens is these bolt on to the outside of the diff casing like you've seen, and then your stub axle is gonna go straight through here and sit nice and neat and tidy in that seal there and rotate beautifully. So what I'd be inclined to do is put a little, just a little dab of oil around this seal just to allow it to spin freely and make sure it's lubed and Bob's your uncle fan is your aunt. So the only other thing to do here is pop a couple of O-rings on. The O-ring just slips into the O-ring groove and sits there relatively loosely. Off we go, nice and easy. That is it done. That's basically your all your parts ready to go back in your diff casing once you get your diff casing cleaned up. Easy as pie, man. Right then guys, so the next part of this process is putting bearings in. Now we've got two output shaft bearings that I'm going to be changing. Before I go any further, it's quite likely the diff line I've got is coming from pinion shaft bearing, which is the one that sits in the actual gearbox housing and the one that needs all the special tools, the preload adjustment and all that kind of gubbins. I only appear to have noise coming from the rear left-hand side of the car and I know I've got a bit of an issue with the snap ring on the drive shaft on that side, so I'm hoping 
that this solves it, just changing the bearings in these housings. Essentially, they're taper roller bearings. So this is the outside race of the old bearing. I'm going to use this to push the new one in. They're going to go in something like this. So what I've got is the inner race is going to fit over the diff, the crown wheel part on this end and on the other end. And then the outer race sits on, on this side here. So I've got these bits in the freezer and these bits in the oven to try and give me a little bit of help in actually getting these in. So I'm just going to go and grab the outer races out of the freezer and we'll start with them first. Okay, so outer race one, I'm going to do these individually so they stay nice and cold. You're never going to be able to see the part number in this, but this is an SKF bearing LM3, no sorry, LM5033100. So we're going to, I'm just going to pop this in here, try and make sure it's nice and square. And I'm going to take the other old bearing race and I'm going to use that to drive it. In, but I want to get it started off first and I don't want to be using anything too heavy with this so I'm just going to go really gently with my small hammer and that's starting to go in already Right, so it's almost then flush now. now. There is a lip on the inside of there it needs to go all the way into, so I'm going to keep going. We'll hear the tone change as it, as it seats. There we go. Okay, so that's all the way in. And luckily, there's a tiny bit of place, so if you use the old outer race, it doesn't want to sort of grip inside of there. That is the outer race in then. So we're looking pretty tasty, it's all the way flushing in. I'll go and grab the other one and we'll do that one exactly the same way. For reference, I'm really not tapping that hard, it sounds loud, but I'm giving it just a gentle, just a gentle tap, there's nothing too serious there. There we go, that's in. Have a little double check, make sure they both look the same, which they do. That's the outer race is done, lovely. They were in the freezer for a couple of days, getting nice and cold. It will help them go in, it will give you that little bit of extra playroom to, to muck around with. This is now old and knackered and can go in the bin. You can actually see, if you look carefully inside there, the wear pattern inside. You can see where the rollers have been sitting on that, that surface there and wearing that bearing away. I'm hoping that that means that we've got a little bit of play in these and that these did need to be changed. Next, we shall take on the inner races. In a race, it's been in the oven, about 50 degrees, just to warm it up a tiny bit, make a cup of coffee and wait for it to warm up just a touch. Now the diff itself is actually nice and cold because it's sitting out here in the garage and I'm up in the north of England so it's not particularly warm here right now. It's not freezing but it's not um, it's not warm by any stretch of your imagination. It's just going to make the process a bit easier now. I didn't keep the inner races for this because this should be big enough for a socket. I've got here 36mm socket, any of you that have got an E36, hopefully that's the reason you're watching this video, are going to have one of them, hopefully, for doing your oil filter housing. Same same size. Same old process. Going to pop this on and tap it in place. Now, this is where you can really illustrate why you never, ever, ever tap on the race of a bearing. This bearing race here is just fit on the outside because that's a taper roller bearing. That's what they look like. You never, ever want to hit on the basket. Obviously, you're just going to knock the basket out and you're completely screwed in your brand new bearing. Right, bigger hammer. Yes, I need new hammers. Mine are embarrassingly old and pretty shit. There you go. That's what it is. So, just a little bit of a tap on. Again, making absolutely sure you're not on the basket. That's beginning to go now. So, I can just level them up a bit. And obviously what I want to make sure is that the socket's not going to grunch when it gets down too low here. So I'll have a little eyeball, make sure it's straight, which it looks like it is. And then we'll keep going, so. So bearing has gone on nice and flush. It's, it's basically sat beautifully flush there. So it's designed real nice, this. Give you a little idea what happens inside the box. These obviously bolt on from the outside. They sit on the, the bearing and they do nice spinny things. There we go, sweet. So that's one side done. I'm just gonna flip it over and do the other side now. <laughs> other side is hopefully gonna be a little bit easier because we've got the bearing sat here to actually rest the, the drive on. So, turned over again. Another thing I've done by the way whilst I'm in here is I've actually put a new snap ring in here. So if I did have a weak snap ring on one of these sides before, I won't have it anymore. Another bearing, fresh out the oven, 60 degrees. Not too hot, you don't want to go too hot with this guys, you get it above 100, you start getting into territory where you might soften some of the hardening, you don't want to be doing that. Same old process again, just give them a little tap down, make sure your seats 
nice and square. She is in. So the whole assembly back together. That's kind of what you're aiming for. Lovely, lovely. Right then guys, now you've seen me put the bearings onto the main gear and crown wheel here. We now are left with only one thing left to do after cleaning it all up is put it all back together again. This has all got to go back together. I'm waiting for the diff cover to finish off drying. Once they're dried off, we'll start putting it all back together. Okay guys, so let's go back a little bit before we start putting everything together just to explain to you why mixing up the shims is not a good idea. Uh, as I said a little bit earlier in the video, I warned you not to mix up these cups and these shims. These outer races are what hold the bearings together or they, they form the outer part of the bearings. They basically sandwich the diff carrier inside the diff and they are set up from factory. These castings are not exactly the same and there's tiny differences in how they're actually manufactured. BMW counteract that by putting this shim in place. The reason you can't mix these up is because if you do, you're gonna end up with a diff carrier which is sitting at the wrong point inside the housing. And what that means is that your diff is essentially gonna wear a funny way. You're gonna get a funny wear pattern between the pinion gear and the main diff carrier. Now, you cannot tell by eye looking at these which is which. So I'm just going to carefully take the left one off there and the right one off of here. I'll pop them back up there. I mark green for left and red for right. If I keep them in front of the carriers, I can make sure then I don't mix them up. I've actually got a bit of red paint on the side of one and a bit of green on the other side. If you look at these, by eye, they look exactly the same. Hopefully you can see that. So there looks to be very little in it. And the only way you can measure them is with something like this. This is a micrometer that I was given by uh, the uncle of a friend of mine. So Dave, if you're watching this, this was Dickie's uh, micrometer. Thank God he gave me it because it's coming in really handy all the time. I'll just zero the mic and I'll show you here the differences in thickness. So this one here on the right, I'm getting 1.8 mil. If you can make that out in camera, hopefully you can. It's 1.817. And this one on this side is 1.607. So 1.817 I had on one there. 1.82 I'm getting now, tiny bit different, microns we're talking about there. And 1.6, so it says 0.2 of a mil variance between the two. You can't mix them up. If you mix them up, you're cocked. Basically, you've got to start rebuilding the diff properly, and that involves testing backlash and all sorts of things that are not in the scope of this video. Hopefully, you haven't mixed them up. A little secret, where a few days later, I had mixed mine up. Hence the reason I've got the micrometer in the garage and I've had to sort that out, which I've now done. Okay, so first protocol was to bring the old uh, the diff housing back up. Just get any excess oil out from inside. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just give a little bit of oil into where these uh, housings are going to sit. So where's my diff oil? That should be... All I want to do is just give a little rub. Basically, it's a bit like oiling up the O-rings. So tip the diff up. It's fairly obvious which way this has to go in. But if you're looking for the diff, this is the bottom, obviously. This is the top, the left and the right. The carrier's going to go in something like this. I find it easiest just to hold the centre point and just lean them in. And just let it sit there for a moment. Left one I said is green. Right one is red. The easiest way I've found to get these in is to gently seat them first of all and lift the carrier up and rotate them a little touch as you go in. Now, as soon as you get to the O-ring, it will get a little bit stiff. So I'll leave that one there for now. And I'll put the other one on this side. So they're both roughly in there. And what I'd like to do really is to tip the diff on its side and just tap one home. So I'm going to start on the right hand side here because I find that one a little bit less agreeable. And what I think I'll do is I'd like to just support the diff a touch. Here we go. So we're going straight down. So I'm looking down inside the diff here and I want to make sure that I'm not going to ram one part into another here. So let me just show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so looking straight down into the diff, you can see the bearing in the middle. If I give it a little wiggle, that's basically in the centre already. So I'm just going to drive that home, making sure that my shim is roughly lined up with all my bolt holes. So I just tap them in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go and put a couple of bolts in just to hold it in place. If you haven't used more force than that, something's gone wrong, lube it up a little bit and see how you get on. So we've got a couple of bolts on that side, we'll slip them over now and we'll do the other side. And the other side looks like it's actually gone in on its own accord, just with the weight of the diff there. 
perfect. That's lovely. Okay, so the same thing would be reverse of opposite. Little tap in place. As soon as we got it this way round, we might as well do this side first. These are 13 millimeter bolts. The bottom two bolt holes that appear to have some sort of sealant on. I'm going to try and recreate that with some stuff that I've got called Cural T. Let me just go and grab that. I'm going to use a combination of Cural T and a little bit of True Lock. Cural T is an anaerobic, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's like a sealant that you use for sealing rotating seals, like crank seals and that sort of thing. I'm just going to put the tiniest little bit on the end here because I figure it can't do any harm because I found that the bottom two bolts here seem to be the ones which had something on them. I'm going to use a tiny little drip of thread lock on these. Where have I put that? There it is. I'll pull the first two out and I'm just going to put a dash of thread lock on these ones. Now I don't know the torque settings on these guys but these are M10 bolts so they're going to be somewhere like 15 or 20 newton meters. The o-ring is what's doing the sealing here so so it's exactly the same on the other side. So we now should have a diff and a carrier which rotates freely. Feels nice, lovely. Okay, so diff oil, about one in three quarter litres. Now the diff cover is designed so that when the diff is sitting horizontally and um, the top fill hole, it should just drip out of that a bit like a gearbox. I'm going to put one and three quarter litres in hoping that I've got a little bit too much in there and then I'll open that drain hole at the end of the process and see if anything drains out. If it doesn't, we'll add a little bit more. So pour it all over the gears. Just to give you a little bit of a reason why I put the sealant on the bolt holes, you can see in here, one there and one there are exposed. And I don't know if you can make it out, but the diff oil there is just above the level of the pinion gear. So we'll put the case on now. Before the, we put the case on, first things first, I want to give all this top surface a really nice clean up with something like acetone, brake cleaner, anything to get any greases or oils off because I want this to be absolutely bone dry before I apply any sealant to it. I'm just going to go and grab some of that now. Okay guys, my apologies. I didn't press record on that last stage and I've now skipped massively ahead. Basically, after filling it up with oil, I've put some sealant on the, the base plate, put the cover on, done it up in a crisscross pattern, and I'm now just checking the fluid level. So I reckon we're a little bit low on fluid at the moment. I just want to see how level the diff is. I would say it's actually sitting a little bit low at the nose end. So I'm just going to tip it up to try and get them horizontal. Right, so I've got fluid coming out there, and I reckon that that is almost bang on. So. It's about 1.8, 1.9 litres by the looks of things, guys. So now I've checked that, I'll put the fill plug back in. And that is it put back together. So we now have one rebuilt diff with lovely little tight bearings. I've not actually done any of the crazy rebuild stuff, keep the shims where they are, put everything back together, nice fresh oil. It can now go back on the car. Before we do, the reason I'm doing this whole job is because I had a whine from the back end of the car. And I said to you that I had a whine coming from the passenger side of the car, didn't I? Earlier on in the video. Since I've been doing the work on the, the diff, I've done a few other things underneath here, along with the suspension arm. Let me just turn the camera around and I shall show you. We've got the arms in with the bushes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Nothing to do with the whine, no. Whilst I was here, I decided that I'd have a little look at redoing the CV grease in the inner axle CVs, whilst the drive shafts are attached to the car. Can be done, by the way pretty much effectively. You basically just knock this plate off the cup and pull out the old grease as best you can and then stuff it with some new stuff. Upon which I realized this CV joint here is a little bit knackered. So I'm going to pop the diff back in for now, but I'm not going to bolt up the axles. Other thing I've done whilst I've been under here is fitted a couple of new handbrake cables, which were not fun to do, but were definitely necessary. You will mine were totally stuffed, guys. The threads in the ends were embarrassingly bad. For now, let's slip the diff in. I've got a little bit of cardboard just in here just to get the diff in place, and it shouldn't be too hard to just muscle it up and in there and then bolt it onto the prop. Then she goes. So before we run it about here, I'm going to wrap this one up here. That's the diff basically done and put in the car. I'm not going to test drive it right away because I want to get that new axle before I do that. I don't see much point in bolting all that axle up when I know there's play in it. There's definitely a problem with it. Hopefully this has been a bit helpful to you. Hopefully you've heeded my warnings about the shims. If you've not, then you've got a big job on your hands putting it back together. If you've got any questions or comments, stick them down below. But for now, that is a diff done, pretty much most of it, and back in the car. Thanks for watching as always, guys. Stay tuned to the channel and stay safe out there. Pay more out.